Hey guys, welcome back to another gear review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the recently released Flux Evo channel, which I have right here. But before we even get into the plugin, I want to take a look at a few things that make this plugin or the entire experience better. The first thing is the Flux Center. In Flux Center, you can see all the Flux plugins, the version number, and a button that allows you to easily install or uninstall. You can also see what plugins are available for Wave SoundGrid, shown right here. But first, you need to select this gear icon at the top and select Waves WPA PI. And you can also see that there's some more settings you can adjust in this menu. So we'll go ahead and close that. And the next thing I want to talk about is plugin authorization. While Flux does use iLock License Manager to authorize your Flux plugins, you have the option to authorize to your computer if you don't want to carry around an iLock key. This is especially handy if you're using a MacBook Pro that's missing USB Type-A connectors. So let's go ahead and get into the plugin. I've got Evo Channel running here in Studio Rack on SoundGrid mode. This session is Dennis Lambert Live. Uh, I worked on this about a month or two ago. I will link those released videos in the comment section so you can go and check those out. Uh, but otherwise, we are going to be comparing what I did previously with Studio Rec here, the plugins I used, to trying to get pretty close only using this Evo channel. But before we get into working with the session, I wanna go ahead and highlight this phase section up here. You have the option to change the polarity, and you can also turn this button on, which allows you to adjust the phase relationships between different microphones. If you wanna line up the phase of the drums, or uh, other sources in the room, or the bass and the drums, or whatever, you can get better phase coherence by using the slider. At the top here, we have the option to turn the analyzer on and off. We can also adjust the waveform height once we get to playing here, I'll show you that. We have light mode and dark mode. Dark mode is my preference. We can adjust the order that things happen, filter EQ, compressor, touch, put this in any order. Bypass the plugin right inside the plugin. We've got some settings here. Uh, up here, if we click on this name, we've got some additional controls, which we can adjust. Over here, we have input control, which we can boost or cut. And then over here, we have output control. Let's see, the drive is right here. You can turn this on and off. And you can also boost it if you want to kind of fatten up. And the thing I like about this drive section too is it's not a distorted sound. It's just kind of like a saturated sound, uh, adds a little bit more fatness and roundness to your sound. It's actually really subtle still, even at you know, 60, 70, 80%. So I really like this section. Here we have our EQ controls. Here we have four fully parametric bands. You can go here and adjust that with your mouse. And I like this line too. I can't tell you how often I work on a plugin and I grab a control here and I'm like, you know, which one does that go to? You know, what cue do I have to adjust? But you can see very easily uh, where it's linked to. We have the option of adding a high pass and low pass filter very easily. And we can adjust the slope, 6, 12, 18, and 24 dB per octave. And then we have a low shelf and high shelf EQ. So really a lot of options. And you have gain right in that section. So if you wind up doing a lot of boosting, you can pull that down to compensate right inside of that section. We have our compressor section here. And I like this because you have all the controls you need, but you also have these quick preset modes, which kind of gets you close right away. And then you can kind of go in and adjust as you need. We'll leave this and start for now. This auto adapt section is basically auto release. Uh, but what's also neat about it is it won't go past your release time. So it's auto, but also takes into consideration your maximum release time. So that's kind of handy. You have this big, beautiful meter. So instead of like this really small thing, you can see all the way down to minus 24. So you really have a lot of resolution to work with. You have your makeup gain, and then you also have a wet, dry blend control. Let's see, down here you have this 
touch. Now, the first time I saw this, I'm like, oh, is this uh, enable more touch controls inside the plugin? Uh, but actually, it's more just finishing touches, if you will. You have the option to use a de expander. You can boost sustain, kill sustain, and then boost transients or kill transients. So you really have a lot of options down here. And then also this listen button is very handy. And we'll go into this here in a second in a little bit more detail. Down below, you have a nice comprehensive preset menu with a search function. So we'll just type in, let's see, acoustic. And you see we have a lot of these acoustic options. Okay, and then down here we have this AB slider, which basically allows you to morph between the A and B setting like that, which is kind of cool. And then over here, we also have the ability to load a different preset in the B side of things. So instead of just one preset, then you have to switch over to B and then load another preset. You can just load that other preset and be good to go. All right, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on real quick is the latency. It's actually only 32 samples or 0.7 milliseconds. This is at 48K. If you are at 96K, the latency is actually the same. So 64 samples, but because it's double, double the sample rate, uh, it's gonna be still 0.7 milliseconds of latency. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. So I played around with the phase section the other day, and even though all these microphones were in the same room, the only difference I could wind up getting was between the bass and the sex because there's a lot of bleed uh, between the two. You can hear a lot of bass in the sax mic. And it wasn't necessarily just a, a phase shift that I was doing. All I had to do was really go in and change the polarity. And that seemed to give me what I needed. Okay, so I think the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and work on the sax a little bit. Let's go ahead and We're gonna get rid of some of that bleed. Uh, we don't wanna take away the low end of the sex though. We just kinda wanna remove the, the bass bleed. Just a little bit to clean it up. You can hear there's a little bit of a honk, kinda around 1K. a little bit of edginess. Just... Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add a little bit of bottom end. It's important while you're EQing, you don't want to really change the way the instrument sounds. We want to just kind of control uh, some of the annoyances or some of the harsh bits. Once you start to get in the, the, the two to four range, it can kind of be pretty harsh, but you also have to be careful that you're not taking a lot of the presence away from the instrument too. So. Let's go ahead and add some of that fatness I was talking about using the drive control. It's a little bit richer in the low end. So definitely a little bit more flavor now. Let's go down here and uh, squeeze on it a little bit. A 
Now, these settings I have here, I played around with er earlier. So we're kind of already where we want to be. But our attack is a little bit slower because we don't want to lose any of the top end of the instrument. And we're also using the auto adapt release here because we don't want to go past 357, but having this auto adapt feature selected uh, gives the plugin control of the release time everything below 357, so it's kind of sweet. And we can boost it up a little bit if we want. So right now we're getting pretty nice fatness to the sound. Uh, the squeeze isn't too bad. It's not uh, dulling the instrument. Uh, it's just kind of sticking in the pocket. All right, let's compare. So before, sound a little bit warmer. But I like the uh, top end of using this Evo channel here. Um, and like I said, this drive feature is really super nice. All right, let's take a look at the piano here. So this is where we were before. So you have a pretty nice fat sound. We're uh, compressing a little bit. So we're just trying to clean up a little bit of that low-end mud bleed. Uh, we don't want to take away the body of the piano, though. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go right for a preset. Let's go ahead and play with maybe transient boost. I just want to hear what it sounds like. We'll go ahead and give it some of that drive. Ooh, that's nice. Give it a little bit of that fatness in the middle. Now this one's difficult because there's so much bleed. Let's see what we can do with this channel. We'll just go ahead and start with compression.
another song. Kind of like that. Pop that pop through a little bit more. See where we were before. It's definitely a little bit more gain. Sounding pretty good. All right, let's take a look at this overhead. This is where we were before. Some EQ, inflator, some drive. Sounds pretty good. Start with a little bit of drive. And we'll just go right for this preset. A little bit more fatness in the stick sound. I like that. Maybe a little bit of boost on the top end. Not bad. All right, let's take a look at the kick. So this is where we were before. So this 1176 is nice. This is one of my go-to plugins for kick drum outside of the SSL bus compressor. So it sounds pretty fat. Nice little low and bump. A bit more fatness to it. Kind of plain sounding. Four. It's nice. 
guys. So let's bypass, oops, don't want that. Let's go ahead and bypass all the Evo channels. We'll enable what we did before. Really how really like how that sex is. All right, guys, that is it for this review. As you can see, it's a pretty neat plugin by Flux. It offers a lot of features, and it allows you to get a, a really good sound really quick. So go to fluxhome.com, uh, definitely check it out. And as always, like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content down the line. Hey, thanks for watching again. Take care.